On this show, we talk about how we can help out our local bodies of water. And I'm happy to announce that we are only 95 Patreon supporters away from starting our very own 501c3 nonprofit, Casting for Conservation. Our mission with Casting for Conservation will be helping supplementally fish stock local bodies of water that could use the help. Whether it's stocking smallmouth bass in a river that's had a major fish kill or potentially adding F1 largemouth to the Potomac River to help improve catch rates. Furthermore, Casting for Conservation will also be seeking to help out with boat ramp facility restoration. There are so many boat ramps and facilities in this area that really could use some love. For $6 a month, which is less than a pack of Senkos or a jackhammer chatterbait, Patreon supporters will receive 5% off their orders to Jake's Bait and Tackle. They'll receive a percentage off their orders to Shallow Water Fishing Adventures Tackle. 10% off their orders to Tiger Crankbaits, 10% off their orders to Catoctin Rods. Members will receive membership-only content, access to our private Facebook community. They'll be entered to monthly fishing photo contest giveaways. And starting in October, we're going to be doing online fishing tournaments as well. Please, if you feel like supporting, we're only 95 Patreon supporters away from starting casting for conservation. Link in the episode description down below. Thank you so much. You're listening to Fishing the DMV. With your host, Thomas Ahrens. Fishing the DMV is brought to you by Jake's Bait and Tackle, located in Winchester, Virginia. And Shallow Water Fishing Adventures Baits, online, located in Mount Airy, Maryland. If that doesn't get you jacked up, I don't know what will. Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to Fishing the DMV. I'm your host, Thomas Aaron, and today I am with uh, Tiffany of Snooky Fishing and and Bruce. Guys, we've we've met multiple times just through the Zeitgeist of Fishing, uh, Richmond Fishing Expo, places like that. I'm really happy to finally get you guys on the show. Awesome. We're so happy to be here. Very much so. Thank yeah. you for having us. No, absolutely. Definitely. Well, so really kind of get into your story. Like, how did this whole crazy social media thing start? Well, I... It, it's funny. There was an online group that we did uh, online, like uh, CPR, catch, picture, and release for a tournament. And it was an online group on Facebook. Snooky here, she, uh, she, uh, what did you have <laughs> right after you? It was 2014. My papa passed away. So in 2015 on his death anniversary, I reached out to that online group and just said, Hey guys, like I need help. Um, you know, mentally just struggling with the whole grief period. And I don't want to go sit at that gravesite and cry my eyes out. Cause that's not what he would want for me. So I reached out and said, Hey, do you have someone that could take me fishing? And the, the big key of why Bruce and I got together was I begged, <laughs> I think it was Eric. I was like, Eric. Hey, uh, you know, I'm not trying to be disrespectful by any means, but please don't like put me on a boat with a young guy. Like I don't want someone who's going to joke and flirt and just, or, or even just kind of like try to teach me how to fish. I just needed to just be on a boat and I needed someone to understand that and kind of, um, not pressure me too much to like get to know me, but just let me just be present in the moment and not be stuck in the past of what I had been through. And so they connected me to Bruce. Only thing I didn't like was uh, he said he thought I'd be safe. Yeah. <laughs> you were a safe option. That's why yeah. I kept you. <laughs> How did it go from a passion that you did with a loved one? And then, you know, you got with Bruce to that integrating into social media. I Well, I think the fact that, that first time that we went out, she gets, I meet her blindly. I've never met her before. It's pouring down rain. Uh, finally stops raining. I forget to put the plug in the boat. Uh, we have True to pull story. it back on shore and put a plug in and bail it out. And we laughed the whole day. And then it was like, it's just found out that I graduated high school with her uncle and it was just something that it all clicked and then we just kept fishing and then uh, little things we did filming it. And then it just turned into social media doing what we do. Uh, it's more, I, it's just having fun and people love having fun. Yeah. I think it was kind of a like interesting thing for the internet to comprehend why someone like me being the fact that I'm a woman and I'm, you know, typically don't look like an outdoorsman back there in that time frame. Um, was hanging out with someone who looks like Bruce. Like they didn't really understand that 
whole no. dynamic. And I think it was kind of neat because I, you know, we got to teach the internet and all our followers that it doesn't matter what you look like, what your age demographic is or anything of like defining who you are as a person as much as just sharing that passion and the love for the outdoors and what that can do to build a friendship like this. Definitely. Mm. Do you think the industry has changed a lot since then? hundred percent. Oh, definitely. Why? Well, the biggest thing I always hear is uh, how much do you pay her to fish with you? <laughs> and, and my answer is always, I don't pay her. She pays me. I'm the guide. And, mm -hmm. But if they ever really look at it, they'll see it's not that it's just that friendship that just comes out in between. Mm -hmm. I mean, we laugh, we joke. She's excited when I catch a fish. So am I. But, and then when me, I'm all about trying to get her into where she can learn and catch fish and not as many as I wanted her to because she catches too many sometimes. But I mean, you're so nice. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I think the industry has grown over the last, what, nine years of us yes. being nine friends, years. both like, from a technology perspective and how social media has grown and how the industry has adjusted to um, putting ourselves and our most vulnerable selves mm -hmm. out there on the internet, you know, and just sharing those stories of like how things can change and how we both have grown in our own journeys as individuals and as a team fishing out there and like learning that and sharing yeah. that with the, uh, the internet, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's nine years is crazy, nine, especially when you think about definitely. COVID. Like the whole COVID year felt like it aged me by five years too. And I, I know so many friends that they started YouTube before COVID and after COVID hit, man, it just launched into the stratosphere. Um, but with all that said, like what would you consider for both of you guys, your hometown kind of bodies of water? The James River. James River, more, more than anything. Um, you got the Chick, the James, Lake yeah. Anno. Smith and Chickahominy Lake. Gaston, Lake. We, Lake. We, really <laughs> we don't, don't put like we put miles on our trucks. We don't care. Yeah. <laughs> like, wherever there's fish, we're going. Yeah. I mean, we've gone gone all over. Yeah. We'll cross state lines too, right? Oh, definitely. Yeah. Anything to chase. I mean, come on. Tail. We went to ICAST. We went fishing down there. We went fishing in the Atlantic Ocean off Sebastian Inlet. We went to uh Indian River, fished in there. We didn't catch anything, but at least we did fish. <laughs> Um, and then we stepped on the Gulf of Mexico. So a lot of different things that we just do just because it's fun. Mm -hmm. I mean, and that's what we want everyone to see. Everything is fun. You know yourself when you're out fishing, it's a serious thing that you're doing because you're trying to win a tournament. But you got to remember it's fun. Mm -hmm. And that's what no. I keep. Yeah. Well, that's true. <laughs> It is interesting because, like, I think tournament fishing has has sucking up so much of the industry, and not just the the fun version of fishing. And you look at different species too, whether it's saltwater, the snakehead, musky things that you don't put anything in the live well. There's no way, and it's just going out to have fun. And that's something that is desperately needed to to breathe fresh yeah. air almost into the industry. Uh, and that's what I keep telling everybody. And even when I she does kids events, and I'll help out with the free fishing day for the kids and all. And that's what it's, we try to show is that it's just about having fun. It's not about anything else. It's just fun. Take in everything that's there for you. Because if you don't, you're going to miss out on so much. I mean, you know yourself, when you're out there on the river and you're taking in more than just the fishing, I mean, the eagle flies over, you're going to look up because you know what it is when it comes past you. Yeah, I think that whole like absorbing the entire experience of the sensory around you, whether that's sound, smell, sight, whatever the case may be, I think that's the thing that a lot of the tournament anglers, um, unfortunately, because of the competition, sometimes forget to enjoy, I guess is a nice way of putting it. <laughs> I'll agree, forget yeah, to yeah. enjoy. So, you know, and I have a lot of friends that are big name pros and I always tell them like, hey, you know, if, if you got a chance between tournaments or sometime in the summer, you know, go hit the salt. The salt is your fun time. Like go enjoy yourself um, and just yeah. get out there and take your families, take your kids, like, or just go 
by yourself for the day and just reset and allow that water and nature to just realign you and allow you to just decompress because that is huge. Life is so short. Way too short. <laughs> Bruce, how has the, the James River and the Rappahannock changed over the years? Well, I don't wade fish in the James River anymore. I, I've lost too many pairs of sunglasses in there. He really just called you an old man, just so you know. <laughs> he didn't ask Bookie that question. <laughs> That's because you're not old. Uh, James has gotten better. I think at some point it, it was good, but it has gotten better with what we've done with the chick. Because when we restocked that, all those fish caught in there were brought back up to Osborne. So that filters back out into the James also. So it's just gotten better. Mm -hmm. um, a lot more crowded. Uh, the Rappahannock is still fish is great, but people just don't know it. I mean, the bass fishing. I mean, you're catching eights and nines in the river, and it's still not getting that talked about like the chick and the James would be. And, uh, of course, we've got the snakehead too, so. Yeah, and, and, that's, and that's and that's so hard because it's you know for both of our perspectives with our platforms you're not trying to blow spots up but you also need to highlight opportunities in the state and that's such a fine line to walk where if you say like the rappahannock's good well that's a massive river so are you blowing a spot there like and, it's, and that's hard because i do have friends in the dwr and they're like we try hard to make this thing good and if you don't talk about it then why would they want to continue to put money into it? And that's, to me, that's such a moral question that I, I deal it. with. Oh, definitely. I, it, and it's like, you can go up and you can say, go up in this area and you're going to find great fishing, but then everybody wants to go to that area and nobody's looking for the other spots that still hold them. It's just may not be as easy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think to prevent gatekeeping, like, obviously, I joke with Bruce about like, Shh, don't tell, you know, but I think there's like a fine line of understanding how you can share spots to encourage, you know, fishing, share the fun. Like, it's, yeah. we want to keep people happy. We want to keep the outdoors growing and sell those licenses and keep our state up to date with everything that we need. But it's just educating those people that we share that information with to to be responsible and just reminding them like we obviously try our best to be a mentor in the sport and for the state just like hey you know if you're going to come to this spot respect nature leave it better than you found it like if you're going to take fish take the limit like do what you're supposed to do read the rules and regulations and make sure you respect na mother nature because yeah. it's we don't by no means want to ever give a spot out to someone who's going to abuse the privilege that's it I mean, yeah, and you can so always hard, give them yeah. general spots. It's like you, you tell them, yeah. I mean, you could say go up to hop yard. Well, hop yard is just where you're going to put in at. From there, you've got to find out what you want, but there's a lot in that area that you can find. Yeah. And, that, and that's the true. It's, it's what, what is that? Uh, I'm going to butcher it. Give a man a fish and teach him to fish something like that. I've though I've not studied the Bible enough, but it, there is something there where yeah. you're not helping them if you just give them the coordinates. But again, it's, and it's just, it's so interesting because in, in, and Tiffany, you know, this with, with your social media handle, it's like people, people will love you or hate you no matter what you post. So at some point you just got to say, you know, heck with it and just do what you want to do and if that means like you're telling a kid where to go then you just yeah you just give it and you don't care because you'll never you'll never please the all-knowing god that is social no. media <laughs> no 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 well I, and kids now kids i'm going to make the special effort i'm going to tell them what to throw and where to throw it yeah. and, because they've got to learn i mean granted someone may go with them but they still have to learn it Mm -hmm. And it's still, it's not going to do what I've done because I'm fishing it my way. They've got to learn to fish it their way and catch them. So there's still that little bit of curve that they've got to get into. And you know yourself, it's like run, throwing a Texas rig worm. Or you can throw it out, you can let it drop, and you can reel it back in. Doesn't mean it's going to work. You're going to have to put it where it needs to be and work it and Maybe jump it up twice or three times before the fish slams it and you set that hook hard. 
Yeah, no, hundred percent. And and that's something that's just, it's ours. Like it doesn't matter what you're in, it, whether it's, you know, welding a doctor fishing or in the fishing industry, it's getting those 10,000 hours in those reps. And, um, even in 2024, it, it's, it's not, it, it's also like what it's who, you know, not just what, you know, and that's just, it takes time to get that in there. Right. And when you get successful, people kind of always look at you bitterly, no matter what industry you're in. No, uh, they, they look down at you because you're no finish your thought. All right. They look down because you're doing what they can't do. Mm -hmm. And that's all it is. I mean, you want to know here, come out I'll show you how to do this, but you're still going to have to figure out a lot of that all for yourself. They don't want to. What was the biggest learning curve as your social media started to blow up? Because I don't think a lot of people appreciate the burden when it comes to that. <sighs> well, it, First off, that's for you. Yeah, two hours. <laughs> we live two hours. Of, hey, we live two hours apart, so we have to figure out how we're going to do it. Where we're going to go? Is she going to come down to where I live and fish my secret spots, or am I going to go to her secret spots? And that's the first challenge that we always have. I mean, we can get out may not be the best day the fishing may not be the greatest but you still have to try to find something that you can do that'll create some content yeah. like getting the lure out of a tree i think there was a lot of learning curves and i'm okay with that because it's exciting now to look back as to where oh. we came from um i'm gonna pick on bruce for a split Go second ahead. no you know i'm always picking on bruce but something as simple as just like his thumb over the image and I've already released the fish and like trying to figure out how to edit that photo. Cause I so want to share it. And I'm like, mm -hmm. Bruce, damn, damn it. <laughs> like move your thumb, you know? So like just as much as he's frustrated because I'm squirrel fishing up in the tree, yanking it. And now the boat's going a different way and he's missed his perfect shot to get <laughs> what he wants, you know, by a lay down or something. And when Bruce with his wacky worm, Oh, no, I'm like, no. oh, Bruce, like, well, let me just be your power pole for the little crawl, dad. And I'll just hang out here. You go ahead and fish your spot. But I think like that dynamic of something as simple as learning how to be in such a confined space as a new angler back then, like in casting and not breaking each other's rods or hurting each other was a learning curve. I think from a media perspective, I was teaching you what I was yes. learning from YouTube videos and then you're teaching me how to fish. So we had that cool dynamic of like, Hey, there's a little bit of a generation gap here. I'm being nice to you. Um, take note of that. That's a Starbucks, but, um, like the generation gap, yeah. you know, we closed it by saying, Hey, I might not know something and I'm okay with saying, Hey, I'm, I'm the dummy in this one. Help me out and vice versa. And then we taught yeah, each the other. Dummy. I don't know. <laughs> So we had that like opportunity to bond and then look back on that and say, Hey, that's, that's, that's pretty awesome. Yeah. You know, cause we're, we don't know what the internet wants. The internet's always changing, whether that's a trend and audio um, visuals, yeah. like what, which way Instagram wants to do what with the algorithm, like, but the bottom like line, I think, and the, the most important valuable thing that we think about is like, what are we delivering and how is it going to affect people? Are we trying to teach somebody something? Are we trying to inspire someone? Are we trying to be relatable and just like make somebody laugh today? Cause it's a Monday and everybody hates going to work on Mondays, but yet we're out here fishing. That's terrible. <laughs> but like, you know, there was like a lot of learning curves. Oh, yeah, we, definitely. We're still learning as we go, but it's just being able to look back on that and say, Hey, like, Hey, we did it. Yeah. <laughs> We didn't Dude. kill each other. I mean, I don't think we've ever broken rods hitting each other either. One time. <laughs> oh, maybe it was my once. Berkeley series one. Oh yeah. Okay. Is there a moment <laughs> that you can look back on Hopefully and that's cool. with all of your social media uploading? Is there a moment you can look back on where you're like, Oh, this is becoming a thing. Does that stick out in your mind at all? <laughs> Honestly, I think it was the first time you did an Instagram live of me getting the lure out of the tree for you. Yeah, I think a lot of people didn't know that product existed. Uh, and it was just kind of funny to see. I think for me, I've always pushed and maybe I do it a little bit too much, but I've always tried my hardest to put it out there because I get a lot of messages about like, oh my gosh, look you like that's so cool. You get to live your dream. That's amazing. Like that's so cool what you and Bruce do. And I'm like, hey, let me let me slow it down. Like I don't want people <laughs> to think that 
just what you see on social media is my everyday life, that that's the only thing I do because there is a lot of struggles behind the scenes that people don't know about. And so I try to make us as vulnerable and authentic as possible, whether that's sharing bloopers or just reminding people, hey, we're not perfect. We don't, you yeah. know, like we have issues, even some things in our friendship have been a little bit like trying to figure out, um, like but that's taking what, that's baits out of friends. my tackle box. Yeah, I'm not well, looking. No, I don't. But anyways, that. like those little things have just, I think that was the turning point when I started getting messages online and they're like, you know, Snooky, thank you for sharing with me and with the internet that you guys have 20 bloopers to make that one 16 second video because I've got a daughter that wants to be an influencer and I'm trying to show her that that just what you see on the internet isn't always what's actually happening behind the camera. Oh, definitely. Yeah, no, I think that's I, kind of. I think that's the hardest thing in microcosm with, with the fame that I'm starting to get to where people look at your persona online and they think that's you 24 seven. That's what it is. It's like, no, I edit an ungodly amount. I don't get to fish. <laughs> it's interview and edit, interview and edit, but they see this thing. It's like, oh, that's what it's like. And it's like, no, you don't see the hours of being stuck in a tree or this photo is not going to work. And it, and it is because it, it's a job that's so public. It's so weird to have this kind of lifestyle nowadays in 2024. Yeah. yeah, very much so. And that was one of my hardest things was learning to take enough pictures so that she would have a good picture. So don't take one and send it over. Say, oh, I got it. You made me sound so prissy. Never. <laughs> is there a, uh, is there a tournament that really stands out to you memory wise with you guys or just a day? Tournament? Tournament or a day on the water? <sighs> oh, only one day. Wow. Uh, I don't know if I could pick one day. Honestly, it's still to this day. It's the very first day that we went out. Yeah. Still to this day. You can't make me cry, so don't do it. <laughs> so, I mean. <laughs> Please don't. <laughs> well, a fun story. How about that? But it's true. I'm trying not to. It's true. Oh, you mean like when she almost fell in trying to net my fish? That was a nine-pound bass. I would have gone in gladly. Whoa, whoa, whoa. A nine pound? Yeah. Okay, okay. We need to hear the story here. <laughs> I don't think it was nine. It was, But I it was think. close. Uh, we're nine. out. This is. We're in the dead of winter now. Because I love fishing wintertime. We're in the dead of winter. I've made my cast. I've caught it on the lipless. I'm fighting it. And I mean, this was real early. And, yeah, and I was she so tries to get that net in there. She gets the net in and gets the fish up. And as she's getting it in, she's about ready to fall out of the boat. And but I'm the grabbing fish was in the boat. I just wasn't. So, yeah. I mean, I did my job. It's one task. One <laughs> she did do it, though. I will say. She is a great net person. <laughs> I'm really glad that I did not tip that boat that day because I had no idea what I needed. I mean, I was such a new angler. I had like hunting bibs on and some hunting boots I borrowed. They weren't even mine. So they were like three sizes too big. I would have sank. Like it would have been absolutely terrible. Now you wouldn't have sank. I'd have pulled you up. <laughs> we both would have been done. I'd have been cold. <laughs> I now, yeah. Yeah. I mean, what? but it's been like that the whole time. It, I think back on those, but yeah, and there's just so many others that have come along that. And too, like that, that's a crawdad. People who don't know that boat, oh, it's like a yeah. bathtub. Yeah, uh, we okay, fish yeah, out of a that crawdad sense. most of the time. So that. Yeah. If he sneezes, yeah. I have to hold on because depending on which mm -hmm. way he leans, I'm yeah, no. going. <laughs> Yeah. So it, it's all a learning yeah. process. And that's why only one broken rod. So that's impressive, but mm -hmm. it shows you what you can do. I think we've you accomplished a lot just in that. Yeah. And, and you don't need a hundred thousand dollar bass boat with the GDP of an African country on there. You don't have success. I no. mean, it, and that's so important because I even got started and I think it was a canoe. Like it wasn't some major bass boat. And we need more people out there promoting that too. Like, hey, you don't have to follow all the glitz and the glamour to have success. This is my oh big baby. You're not a mutt. No, oh, all right. I love you too. <laughs> I love you too, baby. This is Harbor. She is a what? Chow German Shepherd Lab Pit Boxer mix. Aww, she's adorable. Yeah, she's my baby. And then my other baby is in her crate eating her ballistic. She is um 
a German pincher. So she's about 35 pounds. Ooh. Yeah, that's the type my wife would like. More of the travel size. I grew up with uh, Great Danes, so I feel like the bigger dogs are just more my vibe. I trained two of them for about a year and a half during COVID. Oh, really? It's funny seeing little me walking two big Great Danes. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> As like a dog trainer? Yeah, or... I I had like some... yeah, it was just basic stuff. Nothing like certified or anything. It was just, hey, we. she was a travel nurse. And she's like, hey, can you help? My poor dogs are stuck at home. And by the time I get home, I'm too tired to get them to just behave. And I was like, sure, why not? Um, yeah, that's that's something. I don't know if I could have the patience to actually train dogs. Uh, I see the people that do that. God love them because I, I, I get I would get frustrated really easily. Yeah. Well, she's got plenty of patience. She has to train me all the time. Anyway, back Thanks. to the fishing stuff. Um, <laughs> what got you into right. saltwater fishing? Like what what did you start around here, the Chesapeake Bay, or did you go to Florida first? Uh no. Uh, well, I've always done some saltwater fishing uh, ever since I was little. I mean, we were sitting on my mama was sitting on the pier fishing for croaker and a uh, white perch yep. while I was still in her belly. And then right after I was born, I was out on the back out there with her holding me and, and in one hand, a rod and another. So Snooki, what but was then, the biggest thing that you caught? Snooki, of course she goes. The biggest. Is that what you asked me? Mm -hmm. My biggest was a big red. Why oh, you got to go there? <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> So get this, we're jigging Chesapeake Bay, right by the bridge, you know, rock pile. And we're sitting there and I'm working so hard and I do not have the upper body strength to be doing this, but I'm like, the passion's there. So the adrenaline, you don't think about the pain, your arms, you're walking around the next day like that. And this guy comes in like right beside me, like it's a dang tournament and just whoop. It was a <laughs> quarter of an inch shy of citation. Mm. But I can't even be mad at him, you know, because it's worse. And it's like, so what did I do? Yeah. You remember? You took a lot of pictures. Yes, but I also uh, reeled up while you were fighting your yeah, fish. Yeah, you did. Because you did. that's what people do. Yeah. But you just have to keep rubbing in that redfish. I'm going to get a redfish eventually. But she's she's caught more cobia. Yeah. Definitely. Of uh, course, cobia which, jigs too, but I mean. Eels. Snooki, what's your hey, biggest cobia? I just got that. <laughs> I don't know. I have a picture of it <laughs> over here. You can't even see my hand in that one. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah. I don't know how big it was, but it was big enough to take home, cut up, and make fish tacos. <laughs> <laughs> what, are, what are some of your... Um, okay. That was pretty good. What, what are some of your real, like, I want to say, like, bucket list items that you want to catch, you know, freshwater or saltwater? Tarpon. Yeah, Ooh. tarpon and red drone. peacock. A red-tailed catfish out of Brazil. I'm not oh, going that'd there. That would be so cool. Um, that would be a lot of fun. Yeah. 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 Okay. I want to catch a muskie. I want to go down to the New River and catch a muskie. That'd be nice. Muskie would be good. It would be the nice to would be catch fun. a massive smallmouth. What's your... Uh, How about a smallmouth that's bigger than this? What is your biggest smallmouth? Mine? About no, six inches. I think... Wait, Two or three pounds? Yeah. It has been so many years since I caught a smallmouth. I'm so excited. We've got a women's event coming up next month to do smallmouth fishing. And I'm really excited to get back into it because I've been so busy with work and largemouth bass fishing and learning all this other mm -hmm. stuff that I have completely forgotten everything for smallmouth. But it she won't let me go. No. <laughs> because uh -uh. i know what you'll do you'll go out there and you'll cast right where i was casting and you'll yank that citation out and then i'm gonna have to try to be a good person and be like okay i hear you <laughs> all right yay bruce me mom like <laughs> well, where have you been doing some largemouth fishing lately have you been in the area or you've been traveling both um well i've been more around my house um of course, with living in the Northern Neck, it's more ponds, as everybody says, but we don't have any, any real lakes. Um, I guess they were never called lakes back then. They were just a pond. I mean, if you got 35 or 50 acres, it was still a pond. So, yeah, but you fish with Jacob too. Yeah, the, I do. The upper James towards the, the upper Nigeria. James. That, that, that's a trip because the slot limit, anything, under the slot you can bring in but anything in the slot you got to throw back and 
-hmm. it's terrible. 12, I think it's what, 12 to 22 or 20 some inches that you have to throw back every time. So the tournaments can be won with, oh. <laughs> We argue like eight, so nine much. towns. You can win a tournament up there <laughs> with five fish. I, I, I know what that's so, like, there's but it's fun. places around here like that. Yeah. Yeah. There's places around here that like that too. Where I mean, eight but, pounds, uh, three pounders, a monster. Oh yeah. I like catching the big ones. <laughs> I got spoiled. I have Rotten. one. I have <laughs> one special place I can go and, uh, well, I can't go right now, Good night. but, um, dang duck hunters. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that pond has multiple tens out of that pond. So mm. it's a special pond. I fished that all my life, basically. Oh, wow. Yeah. The pond fishing, man, that's where it's yeah, at. Like, I feel lucky. like more, so many people have, that's been their gateway drug to fishing is just ponds. And that will always hold a special place in my heart as well. I mean, I love the river and all, but it's something about a pond, just getting in on a small boat. You don't have to have, you can paddle around. You don't have to have a motor. Um, you can get in a kayak. Um, of course she got me in the kayak first. Otherwise I wouldn't have been in one, but I mean, you can put those in any pond and just, Paddle around and catch fish and have fun, yeah. catch big ones. I think for me, pond fishing, like starting out, gave me a sense of independence because I didn't have mm. to worry so much about reading tide charts and understanding that or like the insecurities of the unknown. If if I do get caught in a current or something like that, like a pond, I could just call mom and be like, hey, I'm checking out. Farmer gave me the gate code. <laughs> like I'm closing the gate behind me. I'm going to be safe. Like you don't have to worry about me unless a bear comes. It's just very private and peaceful. Honestly, yeah. like it's a nice opportunity just to go and explore the outdoors and not have to worry so much about all the other elements. Yeah. It's a great starter point. Mm -hmm. It is. It is. And, and a lot of people don't forget that places like the refuge, like the Rappahannock river, National Wildlife Refuge. Some of those units actually have ponds on it, and you can go fishing there. Oh, it's a little know. harder to get boats in. Oh yeah, um, we've got one right there in Warsaw that um, is the uh, Wilna unit. That's a great place. Uh, there's been ten pounders caught out of it. You can't keep any bass, but you can keep anything else. Snooky, I probably I mean, already asked you. A this, lot of people forget about those. Nine point nine five. Dang, but some people monster. say it's not true because it's a pond fish. Oh, you yeah. caught that in an aquarium. Yeah, no, that wasn't like, an aquarium. Okay, whatever. I got excited <laughs> over it. You know, it's one of those ones where you, we were back, wait, we had to go way back in the back of the pond, too. That was really fun because yeah. it was not expected at no. all. No. And no. it was just like one of those days where we went fishing because I needed to clear my head and I had to so much stuff going on and unfortunately sometimes you know you don't always get to leave it at the bank but thankfully bruce is willing to listen and help me navigate it both in a spiritual way but also too in a like straight up reality like this is worth worrying about and this is not worth worrying about and just helping me maneuver those journeys and then all of a sudden my lines like it didn't even like tick it just was gone yeah you remember that and i'm I just know. like reeling and i'm like Oh, Bruce, <laughs> Bruce, net. Yeah. Bruce is a big one. <laughs> and I'm like all giddy, like a little school kid at the uh, front of the boat. And he's like having to remind me, like, don't tip the boat. Like, it was just, it was, I don't even know how to explain it, but I just felt yeah. like a little kid at Disney World seeing their favorite cartoon character or something. I just went nuts. Like, yeah. And just you reminding me, like, hey, protect the fish. Like take your time with it. Don't yep. don't <laughs> rip it out the water. Like just be easy. And yeah. it's just cool. And it's also anytime like either one of us catches a fish, it's mostly on my side. I feel like it's a rewarding experience because I know he helped me get that fish. I didn't get that fish on my own. It's something he taught me. It's wherever he maneuvered the boat to or whatever the case may be. So it's a really unique bonding experience for us. She's a better fisherman than she lets on. No, you just put me on the front of the boat because you're nice. 
<laughs> it is an interesting thought when you talk about that about oh you just caught it in a pond because i think that's the part of it is the story like the way you elaborate it like this pond doesn't have a lot of big fish in it you didn't think so and then you catch it it makes the story better because if a friend says i went down to mexico and i caught a big one it's like yeah and i and i fell out of boat and i got wet like i assume you should do that if you go to those places but it's when you go to these Oh, I went to the local lake that doesn't have anything and I had a great day. That's it's cooler when you add the context to the story, not just big fish. And when you tell that whole yeah. tale, it makes yeah. it live forever. Well, and a lot of people forget small ponds can get a lot of pressure in them. Um mm -hmm. in my area, there's only a few that are right there. So they're getting a lot of pressure off in one. Um, a lot of people forget about the refuge, but it still gets pressure. I mean, I've been down there. We fished a whole day down there. Haven't seen anybody. I'll go out the next day. There's 10 people out there. So. Yeah. We always joke, like, I guess that's kind of a way of a country boy's figure, country boy's way of figuring out what calendar day it is, because we're always like, is it a holiday? There's a lot of people out yeah. there. <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's check the calendar. Yeah. Yeah. And you just can't escape the pressure. I mean, it's just, it's here. It's what we're dealing with. It's, it's yeah. going to be truly hard to find those places that aren't tapped some way or shape or form. No, definitely. Yeah. But it, yeah. that's exciting. If you think about it in a way, because it's like more people are enjoying the outdoors, which I feel mm -hmm. like betters our community as a whole, because it's bringing up like dopamine. It makes people happy. Like we get out and we, we appreciate things more. And then, you know, you have the aspect of, okay, well you've done a wacky worm for 20 some years, Bruce, like, let's see what technology we I can teach him something I can show him a new lure and encourage him to learn a new skill set. And then when he does catch a fish on it, he's like, Oh, well, this is cool. I mean, he still goes back to the wacky worm because he's stubborn. But I'm like the wacky worm, that was you. <laughs> I'm the drop shot girl. <laughs> now. Now. <laughs> Who ties? You can't it go wrong with drop shot. You girl, do. Though. You can't. Because mm. That's why I pay you to take me fishing. <laughs> You really the drop shots insane at how it's been in the zeitgeist of fishing for I'm gonna say over 15 years, maybe longer, and it still just works. No issues. You could just go out and it'll catch you a fish somewhere somehow. Yeah. It's been in the people have been using a drop shot for as long as I've been old. Golly. But <laughs> it was in a different way. It was in a mm. different aspect. If <laughs> you figure if you're in salt water, you're tying the hook on the line. Put a sinker on the bottom, you're throwing it out, you're letting it set there, waiting for a fish. Same thing with a drop shot. So it's been there, just somebody figured out, let's make a little smaller weight and do it. 100%. Or no, two you... weights or weight with a rattle. Yeah. <laughs> and and saltwater guys and catfish guys, it's the same thing. You put the weight on the bottom to pull the, the bait, you know, above whatever is on the bottom to get in the strike yeah. zone. Like it, it's so interesting how we reinvent things, whether it is fishing or any other industry there is it's, we look at things and just try to tweak it just a little bit to then resell it. Um, yeah, that is fascinating, fascinating stuff. Do you, uh, you, I think, uh, Snooki mentioned earlier, you have an event that you're going to be, uh, uh, going to soon that will get you into smallmouth country. Yeah. You. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Angling women is, uh, putting on like a small women's event at oh gosh what is it called flower it's terrible i need to oh, think don't of it. ask me i didn't know um, it. hold on this is where we do the edit cut yeah. <laughs> oh oh it's a flower we're hosting a women's event at flower camp retreat so that'll be really cool because it's an opportunity for women to network get to know each other learn from each other um hang out at the cabin and spend some time together and then also go fishing for a small mouse so he has a pond there, I think, knock on wood, because cool. I like my pond fishing. And there's also a uh, tidal access. So that'll be cool. Where's it at? James River? You would ask that. Oh, it doesn't say Double on the board. Cut. It doesn't say on our board. So that's why I asked. I don't know. Can we just not put that part? <laughs> <laughs> I'm so, so sorry. We'll pay you for editing. Oh, uh, no, you're fine. <laughs> no, um, leave it. <laughs> So, I mean, with is this the first uh, event like this that you're going to be going to, or is this a normal thing that happens yearly? So those women's events are things that have really spiked in the last couple of years in the industry. I think hmm. companies and women like myself are just getting so frustrated with the idea of like, hey, women want to fish, but we just 
we need to be seen and heard in the industry just as much as men. So there's that aspect of companies getting behind the mission and saying, hey, like, okay, um, something as simple as a rod, I'm only five foot nothing. I can't cast certain types of rods. Let me correct myself. I can, but it would be easier if a company like looked at my size and said, hey, like this, let's modify this rod to fit her better. So it's going to help my performance on the water. And I think those trends in the industry have really, you yeah. know, helped all of us get together. And now we're like seeing all these awesome opportunities to network and say, hey, girlfriend, like you might be in California, I'm in Virginia, but let's get together and let's collab and let's learn from each other. Because if the men can do it for 250 million years, then why can't we do it for at least one? Right? Yeah, that's it. Yeah, I don't know why I'm looking at him. He's not even a woman, but... I, I'm glad I'm glad you brought that up though because it is interesting when so uh, another example for people that are listening um forward facing sonar that becomes a big thing and then you make all this stuff specifically for it and then you think about the female angler like like you just said and that's a huge industry that people could tap when it comes to making customized stuff when it comes to the taper of the rod the length of the rod and that's something that i think every business would be on board with is trying to bring in those customers with those unique products yes we noticed that in florida we were at a um airbnb with some friends that i like work with their team and everything and we were just trying to figure out like hey this would be a really cool lifestyle shoot Snooky, put this kayak on top of your head and carry it and i'm like Okay, I don't normally carry it like that, but I'm excited to learn. So teach me. Once they put the kayak on my head, we realized the the I guess the wingspan would be the yeah. proper way to say it. Like of my arm length, I the kayak was too long. I couldn't carry it. And they're like, we just never thought that a woman's length from the tip of their finger to their shoulder and across would be any different than a man and yeah. i'm like yeah we're we're built differently of course i stopped growing in sixth grade so like it, i'm used to it it doesn't bother me small girl problems but like from a company's perspective if someone was new to fishing that might be an intimidating factor where they feel like hey like this kayak is either too heavy or just it doesn't fit me right i can't i can't take it out and they might get intimidated by that yeah. whereas me i'm like oh no girl i'm gonna we're gonna figure this out <laughs> we're gonna go fishing one way or the That's other it. So well, those are some things that I think companies are starting to have that conversation around. Well, Snooki, what, what is some advice you have for some young girls that are probably listening to this thing about how you, before equipment became customizable that you do to make sure that, you know, you could really put them like uh, you're fishing a frog example. Were there things that you learned or tips to make it a little bit easier with the gear? Um, yes. I mean, just like, for example, with my kayak and the truck, like just knowing my body, I think, and knowing what I'm physically capable of and not pushing myself over those limits too far where I could injure myself. So like, I've got six inch lift on the truck, like I'm going to deadlift that kayak up to get it into the bed of the truck. Once I mm -hmm. uh, tie a rope to the front, deadlift it up, set the nose on the tailgate and then jump down, go around to the backside and then push it up and get it into the truck. And like little things like that is just like knowing what I'm capable of would be tip number one. And number two is just having that confidence and knowing that it's okay if you fail a couple of times, keep trying, keep mm -hmm. thinking outside the box and don't be afraid to put yourself out there to try to do it. 100%. And and that's something I, we didn't even touch on that um, is, is how the kayaking industry has blown up accessibility. And it, really, this is what we have to thank, you know, that, that virus, so to speak, where it forced people outside kayaking was the cheap the cheapest option and now tournament kayak fishing all of it about kayak is is cool it's in the zeitgeist there's there's cheap version there's an expensive versions you can go compete out there with the guys tomorrow anyone can and i that that's so cool that i never would have thought 10 to 15 years ago that's where we'd be in the industry yeah and i think kayaking is cool too because it like you said it's accessible so think about that from someone who might have some type of disability they we've got the like a ramp in hopewell that canoes and kayaks have handrails to help so if you if you have like issues with your legs or you know maybe just don't have that upper body strength to fully put yourself in the water there's a small ramp that you can use with handrails to get into the water and to go explore nature which is amazing and that's part of why I love kayaking. I mean, you were 55 when you first got in yep. a kayak. Like it it's there for everybody. Yep. Even old guys. Yeah. Like him.
I really appreciate y'all having on, and we'll definitely have to have you at Jake's Bait and Tackle sometime in the future. Um, what do you guys have coming up on your schedule, and, and what can we promote with you? You have the Hopewell. Yep, the Rivers and Roads Downtown Festival. So it's a festival in Hopewell where we've shut down. They've got like a bike ride, which is really cool. They've got music, wine and beer, um, kids events, like things that they can interact with. And then they have a bass tournament that is that Friday and Saturday, the 6th and 7th. And then um, after the first, I think I think we're trying to get 100 people. After the first 100 go out and fish the top 25 will compete for 10 grand on day two, which is pretty cool. I think rumor has it that they have it set up where the top 25 have a stage and they get to play their favorite song and go up and everybody's going to be cheering. So it's going to be a really emotional, exciting event for these anglers, especially a lot of my local guys that I'll be rooting for. So that's pretty exciting. What about you? I don't know. I know you're going to be there. Yeah, I guess I'll be there. Yeah. Uh. (laughs) Yeah, she she says I have to work. Bruce's birthday's coming up. He's gonna be even older. No, not happy me. birthday. <laughs> no, no, no that, we've got a month to go. Yeah, but it's coming up. <laughs> yeah, it's right? a month to go. Yeah, even if it was next year, it's still coming up. Yeah, but I mean, other than <laughs> that, uh, mostly just some uh, events with the uh, refuge where I volunteer at, uh, doing different things. Yep, yeah, and you're going to volunteer at my kids' event October 12th. October for her okay. kids' event. So Pretty cool. We're going to take a couple kids fishing at the local Boy Scout camp, which will be really neat. I have like some really cool ideas I can't let out yet because I haven't released it, but they have a pirate Ooh. ship there that's right on a pond for the kids to play on and fish off of, which is really cool. That's actually that really cool. I went to as a Boy Scout. Yeah, to say that's, yeah, that's the spiritual ship. part. It's so cool that Bruce gets to go back. <laughs> <laughs> yes. It's cool. I went and saw it. Yeah, he's so excited because how many years did you spend going there? Um, probably four. So at four that years. Boy Scout camp, at you the camp, to like... and then uh, yeah, I did mile swim at that camp. Yeah, that's pretty but cool. So he's that going pool's back no longer as a there. Mm. Well, we'll so, have to have you guys back on. Um, we'll have to have you guys back on uh, later this fall to really just see kind of what's happening in your lives and be able to promote what's coming up next. Uh, as always, guys, link in the episode description to everything that we talked about. Please hit that like button. It really helps us out in the algorithm. If you'd like to, you know, go check us out on Patreon. We're getting super close to our goal of starting a nonprofit. I have permission from Maryland and Virginia to do a stocking program of all our local waterways. That's something I want to get done is let's get control back into the hands of the people so we can respect our resources for futures to come like and subscribe the channel and we'll see you next time on fishing the dmv bye you're listening to fishing the dmv with your host thomas aarons fishing the dmv is brought to you by jake's bait and tackle located in winchester virginia if that doesn't get you jacked up i don't know what will